The History of Insects by Anonymous. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The History of Insects by Anonymous. Insects are so called from a separation in the middle of their bodies, seemingly cut into two parts, and joined together by a small ligature, as we see in wasps and common flies. However small and contemptible this class of beings may appear at first thought, yet when we come to reflect and carefully in investigate, we shall be struck with wonder and astonishment, and shall discover that the smallest gnat that buzzes in the meadow is as much a subject of admiration as the largest elephant that ranges the forests, or the most huge whale that ploughs the deep. And when we consider the least creatures that we can imagine, myriads of which are too small to be discovered without the help of glasses, and that each of their bodies is made up of different organs or parts by which they receive or retain nourishment, with the power of action, how natural the exclamation. Quote, o Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. Unquote. Under these considerations, that they are the work of the same great, good, and almighty hands that formed us, and that they are all capable of feeling pleasure and pain. Surely every little child, as well as older person, ought to carefully avoid every kind of cruelty to any kind of creature, great or small. The Supreme Court of Judicature at Athens punished boy for putting out the eyes of a poor bird, and parents and masters should never overlook an instance of cruelty to anything that has life, however minute and seemingly contemptible the object may be. Quote, I would not enter on my list of friends, though graced with polished manners and fine sense, yet wanting sensibility the man who needlessly sets foot upon a worm. The flea. This very troublesome little animal multiplies very fast among old rags, dirt, straw, and litter, hogs, cats, or dogs sleep, and in the hair and bristles of these creatures. Therefore, as a means of avoiding such unwelcome neighbors, in the spring the cleanly fanner scrapes the rubbish about his woodpile and around his house and barn, and removes it to his field, where it also repays him by manuring his lands. They abound in warm countries, particularly in the southern parts of France and Italy. When examined by a microscope, the flea is a pleasant object. The body is curiously adorned with a suit of polished armor, neatly jointed, and beset with a great number of sharp pins, almost like the quills of a porcupine. It has a small head, large eyes, two horns or feelers, which proceed from the head, and four long legs from the breast. They are very hairy and long, and have several joints, which fold as if it were one within another. The Grasshopper Grasshoppers are too common to need description, <laughs> as they abound almost wherever there is green grass. One summer only is their period of life. They are hatched in the spring and die in the fall, previous to which they deposit their eggs in the earth which the genial warmth of the next season brings to life. They are food for many of the feathered race. The Dragonfly Of these flies, which are kaled by many, spindles there are various species. They all have two large eyes covering the whole surface of the head. They fly very swiftly and prey upon the wing, clearing the air of innumerable little flies. The great live above water, but the smaller are common among edges and about gardens. The scorpion. This is one of the largest of all the insect tribe. It is met with in different countries and of various sizes, from two to three inches, nearly a foot in length. It somewhat resembles a lobster and casts its skin as a lobster does its shell. Scorpions are common in hot countries. They are very bold and watchful. When anything approaches, they erect their tails, and stand ready to inflict the direful sting, 
in some parts of Italy and France, they are among the greatest pests that plague mankind. They are very numerous, and are most common in old houses, in dry or decayed walls, and among furniture, insomuch that it is attended with much danger to remove the same. Their sting is generally a very deadly poison, though not in all cases, owing to a difference of malignity of different animals or some other cause. In the time of the children of Israel, scorpions were a plague in Egypt and Canaan, as appears in the sacred writings. See Deuteronomy, Volume 3, Chapter 15, and other patches. The Honey Bee This is an extraordinary, curious, and remarkably industrious little insect to which mankind are, are indebted for one of the most palatable and wholesome sweets which nature affords and which was one of the choice articles with which the promised land was said to abound. In every hive of bees there are three kinds, the queen, the drones, and the laborers. Of these last there are by far the greatest number, and as cold weather approaches they drive from the hives and destroy the drones that have not labored in summer and will not let them eat in winter. If bees are examined through a glass hive, all appears at first like confusion, but on a more careful inspection, every animal is found regularly employed. It is very delightful, when the maple and other trees are in bloom, or the clover in the meadow, to be abroad and hear their busy hum. Quote, Brisk as the busy bee among learning, <laughs> lowers, employ thy youthful sunshine hours. The Elephant Beetle The elephant beetle is the largest of its kind hitherto known, and is found in South America, particularly in Guinea, around the rivers Suriname and Orinoco. It is of a black color, and the whole body is covered with a shell, full as thick and strong as that of a small crab. There is one preserved in the museum that measures more than six inches. Of butterflies there are many kinds. How wonderful this, the various changes of this class of insects. The butterflies lay their eggs, and from these hatch out worms or caterpillars, which change their skins several times, and finally become aurelier chrysales or silkworms, out of which come the beautiful butterflies. End of The History of Insects by Anonymous